Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is sports money reporter Justin Birnbaum. Justin, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Brittany. Forbes just published our billionaires list, and I want to talk about those richest sports owners. Who's the top one? So the top spot goes to Mukesh Ambani, and he's worth an astonishing $83.4 billion. He owns the Mumbai Indians of the Indian Premier League, which is a cricket team, and his fortune is attributed to his multinational conglomerate, Reliance Industries, and they do everything from telecom to mass media to petrochemicals. They're pretty much, you know, you name it, they're in it. And uh, he has jockeyed back and forth for the top spot for a while with Clippers owner Steve Ballmer, who uh, is the former CEO of Microsoft, and Ambani is back on top. So what sports dominate the world's richest owners? So generally it's, it's a mix of soccer, basketball, and football. And the one thing to remember is that in a lot of cases, some of these owners own multiple sports teams, like David Tepper, who owns the Carolina Panthers, and Charlotte FC of Major League Soccer. So it, it's interesting that they're involved in so many different things and that there's so much overlap between those. So it's it's not like, you know, we look at the top 20 and each is one team. You know, there are a lot of cases where many more teams are represented there. So you mentioned that some of these owners own multiple teams. Why are the ultra wealthy so interested in sports? Well, I think it has to do with that sports has kind of been identified as a recession resistant asset that doesn't necessarily correlate to the market. So whereas the market can swing pretty wildly in one direction or another, Sports teams tend to just keep going up and up and up, at least in major sports leagues. And a lot of it has to do with rising media rights, payments, and new revenue streams, and this or that. So you mentioned on the list that the richest sports owner is actually from India. So who's another interesting non-U.S. sports owner who made it this year? I find Masayoshi-san, uh, SoftBank's founder and CEO, extremely interesting. He's obviously known for uh, his investing prowess, and SoftBank is an extremely powerful, dominant public company. But he owns uh, the SoftBank Hawks, which is named for the corporation uh, in Nippon Professional Baseball. They've been incredibly successful winning the Japan Series multiple times. And it's not necessarily, you know, a large part of his fortune. I mean, his fortune has swung downward quite a bit. A couple of years ago, it was, you know, north of $45 billion. Now it's $22.4 billion. But what's super interesting about him is we look at Steve Cohen of Major League Baseball, the, owner, the billionaire hedge fund owner of the New York Mets, as the richest owner in baseball. But if we're talking the broader baseball world, then it's Sun, because he is richer and he owns a baseball team over in Japan. You mentioned Sun's fortune swung down the past few years. Is that common with other of the richest owners? Uh, it depends. It depends how they made their fortune, because his, his was tied to SoftBank's performance. And obviously, the, the public markets have gone through a, a bit of a tumult in the last few years, and that's due to a number of reasons, whether it's you know an erratic market or, or inflation running rampant. So it depends whose fortune is tied up with, tied up where. Uh, you know, obviously to be this rich and uh, to to be sports owners, you know, there's a disconnect. You know, a lot of these cases, these sports teams are worth a lot of money, but to be that rich, you know, your holdings have to be elsewhere. And are you seeing any other common themes or trends this year as you're looking at the world's richest sports owners? Well, I think, for one, we've seen an unprecedented amount of sports teams being up for sale. And, you know, just look at the Denver Broncos and the Phoenix Suns. You know, they're selling for higher and higher values than ever. A lot of that has to do with a bet that, that sports teams are going to continue to appreciate in value. Some of that has to do with, you know, take the NBA, for example, that they're expected to get a huge raise in their media rights. But ultimately, you know, there, there's a big bet on the sports industry. It's really one of the last things that is live appointment viewing. You know, many people don't watch things live anymore and with sports, you know, especially for those who, who gamble or, or play fantasy sports or have, you know, one other connection to the sport, they want to see it happening live. So that's there's there's growing interest in the sports world. There's there's nothing to say it's gonna keep going down. I think that these teams keep selling for more and more money shows that. So with this growing interest, let's read the tea leaves a little bit throughout the next year. Is it a good time to be a sports owner? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think so. I think uh, you look at the major sports leagues, especially here in the U.S., and valuations are going up. You know, MLB is in a bit of a crisis with its regional sports networks, and our, when our valuations came out, they were still up. So I think it's a great time, and I think, uh, you know, we should expect to see these keep going up and up and up. Justin Birnbaum, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Brittany.